So one of the things I wanted to do was test out my lighting situation in the evening. And as you can see, <laughs> this is the reflection of one of the lights. I have dimmed them down a bit and I've got one here and this one's not as noticeable actually, which is kind of cool. I just wanted to see how this was going to work or whether or not I'm going to have to put something here. One of the other things I have done this week is I went to my PO box, which I haven't done for over a month, just to pick up a few bits and pieces. So we have some Happy Meal to open and I'm really excited about this. So I have an envelope here, first of all. I have covered up people's addresses for privacy, obviously. So we want to get into this and see what is in it. It feels like quite a thick envelope. And this has come from Pat. Thank you, Pat, because that is real nice of you. This knife is so blunt. I've been using this to open packages um, for, uh, and also the packing boxes. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's ex oh, there's some oh, greetings from sunny Florida. Oh, and she's used her upgrade card. Look, oh, this is amazing. Oh, wow. Okay, let's see. Uh, dear Gem, thank you for a wonderful year. I have enjoyed each and every video. I have expanded my colouring talents and owe it to you, demoing all the great products. It has improved my oil painting. Oh, that's exciting. My coloured pencil work and my colouring book projects. When I started watching you, you posted two videos involving meeting the cows. <laughs> One was pretty short, the other longer. Can you repost these? I really enjoyed them. I know you are moving. Good luck with that endeavour. I can only imagine. Seriously, I'm a city girl. Do you take the stock to the new farm or do you have to buy new ones for the new farm? I sound dumb, I know, but I, like I said, city girl in big capital letters. Well, good luck. Keep on arting. If you have any left, uh, may I have a green sticker. Thanks, Pat. See back. The watercolour card enclosed is by a Florida artist, Evie someone. Oh, look, it's so pretty. I like her work. Thought you might too. Love, Pat. Oh, look, this is beautiful. It's so pretty. It's so far removed from our weather. Look, it, that is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, Evie Okerstrom. Okay. Oh, Pat, this is lovely. Thank you so much. I'm going to take this out and have a look at it. Holiday at the Beach, it is called, and it's New Smyrna Beach in Florida. So she's painted an actual place. Oh, it's got a little envelope with it as well, and it's, it's actually a card. How cute is that? That is so thoughtful. Thank you so much, Pat. That is lovely. Uh, to answer your questions, there are already cattle here. We have brought a few of our animals with us, but we have a whole host of new ones, and they are, apparently some of them are quite friendly, so uh, we, might, we might be able to go out at some point and go and find them. I shall link to the, the cow videos for you so that you can find them. I shall do that especially for you. That is not a problem. Thank you so much, Pat. And I'm really pleased that you used your Upcrate greeting card. That's really made my day. Uh, thank you so much. And I love all the metallic pens you've used here. I'm assuming it's the ones from the, the, um, the Upcrate and such like. But it's very shiny, very sparkly. Thank you so much, Pat. That is such a lovely card. And I also love your stamps as well. Your stamps are so pretty. Our stamps are really boring. They've all got the queen on them. <laughs> it is very late at night and I am rocking some. Um, it's actually like a chocolate malted drink. We have um, it, the, the malted drink here in the UK is Horlicks. And it's basically like a chocolate version of that. I just fancied it just for a little change. Okay, the other thing as well is I knew this was coming and this is from a very special person called Taryn and she has a an Instagram and it's called Tea Time with Taryn. I do believe that at one point she may have had a YouTube channel but she contacted me and said she was going to send me this and look at this envelope. How professional is that? It's absolutely lovely with a little artwork down the side and this all printed and she's got this lovely um like cut out it's like a star cut out. I don't know if you can see that in the light, which is the back of the envelope. I'm kind of loath to bust this open, but I think I'm going to have to. See if I can rescue the envelope because it's so pretty. I really am going to have to snap off this blade. It's just ridiculous. I think I'd be better trying to cut through this with my fingernail. <laughs> am I in? Nope. Oh, careful. Careful, Gem. 
Oh, there's oh, there's goodies in here. There's lots of goodies. Let's put this. Oh, wow. Oh. Now, I absolutely love Taryn's artwork. Uh, she's very, very talented. And I love her, uh, some of her watercolour paintings as well. So it says, Dear Gem, I hope you enjoy these colouring goodies. The round stickers are specifically for markers of any kind. Oh, yes. The note cards are new, never been seen before. Woo! So we get an exclusive. Feel free to give them away if you're not interested in colouring them. Thanks for trying my new products. I'm excited to see what you think, Taryn. Oh, Taryn, I want to colour this. <laughs> so many things to colour. So we've got our little card here. So yeah, she, she messaged me and told me that she had made these glossy stickers and they're specifically designed for markers again i'm kind of like i don't want to like bust everything open but i kind of do <laughs> let's see if I, there we go right okay so she's given me two packs which is nice let's see what it says on the back these are glossy stickers but are quick drying to prevent smudging works with all types of markers and pens not recommended for colored pencils and crayons so these are specifically for markers and i'm going to pop one of these open and have a little look at the designs. So let's have a look at them. Oh, they are really glossy. Can you see the shine? They are super shiny. Oh, and there's lots of little floral designs. Look at these, these are beautiful. These are gorgeous, Taryn. Okay, so we've got lots of designs to choose from as well. That's really nice. And you can color them. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> there's more, oh, there's more. Goodness me, there's more, there's lots. So you've got, they're all different. And you've got lots to choose from and they feel really high quality. I mean, they are, the, the, the sheen on those are absolutely lovely. Oh, there's another one in here. <laughs> oh God, they're multiplying. So I thought we could maybe do a little video on this. And also she's given us the note cards. We could try these out too. Oh, she's got a Geodes one. Oh, this, is, this one's my favourite. Um, I thought we could maybe give these a little try out for Taryn and we can give her some feedback on what we think because I'm sure she would appreciate that. Let's see what we've got here. And this this is really thick cardstock as well. You know, this is a high quality product. Tea Time with Taryn, colour and greeting card. And she's got her website there. So I'll leave the link to that in the video description for you as well. And she's left a little slot at the bottom so that you can put your name down when you've coloured it in. That is lovely. And they would be great to give to people. I'm always looking for blank greetings cards. Uh, I really, I kind of, I've kind of got a thing about buying like commercial cards because they're so expensive and they're so impersonal. So these are perfect. So Taryn, I just want to say thank you very much. And I am more than happy to road test this. I'm really excited about these. These are lovely. And I will use them as something that I, I know I will use. So yeah, thanks Taryn, that's amazing. That's so generous of you to take the time to send this stuff over. Um, this has come all the way from Canada, by the way, guys. It's not like she's just like popped it in the post down the road. <laughs> and this one's for me. I'm gonna color this one too. Oh. <laughs> so seeing as she's given us two sets, I might have these as a giveaway. We'll test them out and see how we go. And uh, then we might use them as part of like a little goodie pack or something like that. That would be a good idea. Now, the last thing that I've got here is a box. And I actually know this handwriting now because this person regularly sends me things and it's really not a requirement. Um, this is from Cal. Uh, she sent me a, a little box and I have no idea what is in this. So we're going to find out together. And she's already said that it's okay to open it and share it. So that's good too. Cal, Cal's like a, she's like a serial sender. You really don't need to do this, Cal, honestly. Um, I think you're just one of the most generous people I've ever met and you're so thoughtful as well. Yeah, please don't feel obliged anyone at any point to send me things, it is not a requirement. The fact that you guys are watching and commenting is more than enough. We had um, the painter and decorator was in this morning and he was intrigued by the fact that I had a YouTube channel. So I was telling him about you guys and how, you know, how nice the community is and how good you guys are to me. And he was like, they send you stuff? And I'm like, yeah, like, and I'd like way more than I'd ever need as well. Ooh. Oh, there's a wee scrap of paper in here. I think that's just a scrap of paper. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know what this is for, but it's there. To, oh, she's drawn a pussy shot on the back. Pussy shot. 
let's open this up. Oh, anyway. Oh, look how pretty this is as well. This is nice. Amanda Clark First Light. That's, I really like that. I'm really into that. Look at the colours in the background. Callie, you've got good taste. Hiya, Gem. I saw these and thought they would make a great cave warming present. <laughs> warming present. I know I am enabling a llama addiction but I'm fine with that. Haha. <laughs> All the best for your new cave and wishing you hours of arting. Best wishes Cal. P.S. Please also find enclosed a couple of spare bits from my scro scrawler stash that I'm not in need of but thought they might be okay for the next cave stash update. Oh Cal that's amazing. Oh jeez. Oh guys this is just too much for me. Like I can't deal with Oh, she has she has given us the the desert palette set of pastels that came in the January scrawler box, and this is actually amazing because I was kind of swithering whether or not to keep my set or whether to put them into the stash. So that you must have read my mind, uh, Cal. So that's great. It means I can keep my set, but I can also pop that into the next cave stash as well and give someone else a chance. That's that's brilliant. That's like one of the best things that anyone can do is pass on art supplies that they don't want so that we can, um, you know, keep the cave going. That That's brilliant, Cal. Amazing. Thank you so much. Racing llama wind-ups. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is the funniest thing I've seen. Oh my goodness. You know that Pip's going to go nuts for these if we wind them up. Oh, this is amazing. This is actually like a really, really good thing to try out on this desk because although this is like a wood textured desk, it's actually quite shiny and smooth. Obviously, as you can tell by the reflection, I'm going to have to whip these bad boys out. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever bought me wind up llamas before. <laughs> oh wow. They're really pretty in their little box as well. Are they oh their straps down, okay. They're they're secure. This is the best fun you can have with your clothes on. <laughs> okay. I might have to get a side angle of these. <laughs> These are hilarious because they've got like a really serene expression on their face as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cal, you're amazing. Thank you so much. That has actually made my day. What else has she put in? Oh, this is the little uh, Dale Rowney travel set of watercolours. Uh, this was a great little set. I actually gave mine away. <clears throat> well, I didn't give it away. I put it into the stash. And Cal clearly hasn't used this by the looks of things. This is a great little travel set. It is really compact. Oh. It is really compact, it's really slim, and the paints are really, really nice as well. How many times can I say really? This is a lovely little set, so I will put this into the cave stash as well for somebody to grab. There was someone that was looking for a, a starter like watercolour set. I can't remember who it was. Was it Margaret? Margaret, was it you? Uh, yeah, so I'll pop this into the next cave stash update as well and someone can make really good use of this. I highly recommend this as a travel set. It's a lovely little set of paints. Oh, there's something else as well. Good grief. This was the Claire Fontaine uh, sketchbook as well. Again, this is like really high quality paper. And it's, I think it's 160 GSM paper. And it's just beautiful. It's lovely. And I, it's a really high quality item. And I really like the, the embossed cover on it as well. Again, that's going to go into the stash for someone as well. I've already uh, done the same. I've given mine away because I've got more sketchbooks than I can shake a stick at. Cal, once again, 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 thank you so much. This is really thoughtful of you, you know, thinking about the other people in our little cave community as well. Your card's absolutely gorgeous. I, I kind of want to put that in a frame, if I'm honest. I was going to put it in the, the big book of gratitude, but I think that warrant's going up on the on the wall. And obviously, especially thank you for my racing llamas, because that that's just the best thing ever. <laughs> Thank you ever so much, Cal. You're a, you're a, an absolute sweetheart. Or as we would say, you're a peach. You're a, just a peach. Okay, there's like oodles of things to show. This video is going to be so long. Okay, onward. 
The next thing I have to show you is this. And this is my new 3D pen. I was actually in the middle of a, a 3D pen project, which eventually was going to be a video. That was back in July, I think. And my 3D pen gave up the ghost. So with moving and everything, I kind of just like sat it to the side. But I finally ordered a new one. And this was on recommendation of some of the people in one of the, the 3D pen Facebook groups that I'm in. And apparently this is quite reliable. So this is the the Mint 3D or the Minted Printing Pen. I don't know what is the right way to pronounce it. I'm going to email them and ask them because I'm a stickler for stuff like that. But yeah, this is the Pro version. And I've had a play with it already. I did, uh, I did have a go with it just to sort of get a feel for it. So I thought I would just show you this quickly. This will feature obviously in the video that I put out when I finally finish what I'm doing. And this is basically, this is like their top end pen. And I think I paid about £40 for it, but I had to pay £20 in custom fees because it came from the US. Uh, basically, this is a little LED display which shows you the temperature. And you can adjust the temperature a degree at a time with these little buttons here. This is the speed that your filament comes out at and it's actually on a slider which I think is amazing so you can actually alter it as you are working and it'll speed up and slow down and you have your feed button so this is to feed your filament in which goes in at the end here and also that's your like start stop button for when you're actually working now the thing i really like about this pen is that if you double tap this button it will put out a continuous flow so you can just keep going with your hand and you don't have to press anything but if you only press it once you can hold it down and you can uh, like spot fix things with it or just work in tiny little sections and when you take your finger off the button it stops and this button is to remove your filament when you're finished or if you've come to the end of a roll or whatever, you can take it out to, to change it. The other thing I really like about this is this whole section comes off. I think they call it a service hatch or a service panel or something like that. What that lets you do is if you get a blockage, which is quite common with 3D pens, you can actually take this off and try and remove the blockage yourself. The other thing that it lets you do, and this was the main reason I bought this pen, is that if your nozzle ends up getting knackered, which is part of what happened to my old one, you can actually take this plastic casing off and it allows you to replace just the nozzle and you can buy new nozzles from them directly so you don't have to throw out your entire pen. The last pen that I had, everything inside, including the nozzle, was all bonded together. It was like one unit, so there was no way of repairing it. So this is a much more cost-effective way of doing 3D pen work and the fact that you can replace the nozzles is amazing. The the feedback I've had as well, their customer support's really good and they actually put this little flyer in with it that says before returning it to the retailer, see if we can help. So the customer support is there. They do want to help you fix things instead of this sort of disposable society that we live in or we'll just chuck it out and get a replacement. They have tutorials as well on their website so that's really good too. So my experiences with it so far are really good. It's really responsive. It starts and stops when you press the button. It starts and stops a lot quicker than my old one. And it's also a lot quieter. The fumes that come off it seem to be less as well. And I don't know why that is. I don't know whether it's because I'm in a bigger room. Uh, I'm using the same filament that I was using before. But it just doesn't seem to smell quite as strongly and there's two types of filament that this takes abs which is an oil-based filament and pla which is a plant-based filament and the pla filament it actually smells quite sweet it's quite a pleasant smell the abs filament you're not really supposed to breathe in the vapors because it's not good for you it's not good for your lungs um but i just find that the odor is greatly reduced with this but that might not be the pain it might just be the environment that i'm in now and this, uh, it did come with an American plug on it. Uh, thankfully, the end that goes into the plug is a USB. So I was able to use a British plug because our plugs are three pin plugs, like three, three prong plugs. And we're probably, I think, the only country in the world that use three prong plugs. Everybody else's is two in some sort of configuration. Um, but I've got plenty of spare plugs, so that was absolutely fine. So that came in the box as well. They also give you this diddy little screwdriver, and that's so that you can unscrew the this part here to take the nozzle off. It is like the weeniest screwdriver ever. It's so tiny. Ha! 
So that was everything that came in the box. So you can expect to see that the project that I'm working on is really big and I'm probably only about halfway through it. So it's not a video you're going to see imminently, but you will see this in action at some point. And I love the box that comes in as well. It's got this little magnetic flap on it and it's really pretty. So why not? I will leave a link in the description to their website if it's something that you're thinking about yourself. They do do different models. You don't have to buy one as expensive as this. And they also do one for kids as well, which is really awesome. So if it's something that you're interested in, you can go and check that out. The next thing that I have uh, in a video I did just before I moved, I did a little bit of work on watercolour trees. Some of you will have seen that video. I will leave it linked in the end card if you haven't seen it and you would like to watch it because I find that I tend to paint trees the same way all the time and I have no variety in them and I really wanted to get away from that. So kind of expanding on that, I have treated myself to two books. One is Drawing Masterclass Trees by Dennis John Naylor. And again, this was recommended to me by someone. Oh goodness, it's very shiny. And this book is so thick. Look how thick this is. It's huge. And they're there's there's everything in this book but they do different ones uh there's one animals and flowers and things like that as well they're a really good series of books and they go into quite a lot of depth as well and there's different trees but an oak in spring so you know they talk specifically about the time of year that this tree would look like this and there's lots of lovely pictures as well. It's a really well-rounded book. It gives you like a selection of supplies as well as sort of step-by-step -step techniques into actually creating your trees. You know, there's one with the shape. So it talks about the proportions and the outline and how to build up the layers of the, the tones and the values in it to make it look and it's really, really in-depth. I mean, it's it, this is an excellent book. So I am going to spend a little bit of time in my sketchbook as well as with my paintbrush. And I'm going to do some of the exercises in here and see if I can't up my tree game just that little bit more. I do think that by doing it in graphite in a sketchbook first, I find it easier to translate techniques and skills from pencil into watercolour rather than the other way around. And I think that's just purely down to the fact that I'm much more experienced with pencils than I am with paint. So I'm looking forward to trying some of this out. Uh, if I do some of these exercises, I will share the outcome on my Instagram page. And again, if you don't follow me on Instagram, the information for that is down in the description and it's also on the little green end card bit like in the background so you can check that out too. The other one that I got as well, I just kind of went a bit mad with this, uh, I got this much 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 bigger one, Drawing Trees Learn to Draw Step by Step and this is by William F. Powell and it's the same sort of idea. Uh, I would say that this one, it's more like, uh, how can I describe it, it's more hand -holdy. it really is step by step. But it is the same sort of idea and it talks about shading techniques and things at the beginning before you get started. And then after that, it goes on to different exercises and how to put them into your pictures and all that kind of stuff. But it is very, it's, it's a lot simpler, I would say. And the step by step is very step by step. So if you are a novice sketcher i would say this book would probably be more useful but i love the fact that it's in this big format as well because i you could prop this up in front of you you know and have it open and you've got it on a whole spread so this is a this is a really really nice book i really like it as well and it's it goes into enough detail i mean it's not it's not like too simple if you know what I mean you know it's not uh condescending shall we say but they say here's a part on root patterns as well which is really interesting and it's something that not a lot of people think about when they're drawing a tree because we tend to think about the trunk and the foliage at the top and the bottom kind of gets neglected and it's usually hiding well when I'm drawing anyway it's usually hiding in amongst bits of grass so that's going to be really helpful and I'm actually really excited about this because I, I, I like trees I'm surrounded by trees and at the new place here, at the new cave, we have quite a few trees in our garden as well, which is really nice. So I am suitably excited about doing some sketching with these books and drawing some trees. Again, I'll leave the links for these in the description if it's something you fancy. I'm kind of running out of space here. <laughs> the other thing that I've got, and I'm, I'm having to exercise so much self-control, 
I did pre-order Worlds Within Worlds, which is the new book from Kirby Rosanna's. And it would seem that he has changed publishers, which I am not surprised about after his previous books. I did not buy Geomorphia, uh, Phantomorphia, and I can't remember what the other one was called, the single-sided ones, because they were really, really poor quality. And Kirby said himself that he wasn't happy about them being uh, published. He has been promoting this. So this is his newest book, and this is what I would say uh, is him back to his best. Oh, here we are, they're in the back. Yeah, Phantomorphia, Geomorphia, I didn't buy these ones. And I also didn't buy Color Morphia because it's kind of like a rehash of some of his other ones. But I have uh, the three original ones, which are excellent. So this is typical Kirby. This is very similar to the, the I actually did a video on it, on Coloring Fish. But the artwork is absolutely stunning as usual. It's absolutely top class. I love his artwork. I think he's just such a talented artist. And his imagination is amazing. And I really, really want to colour in this like so, so badly. Like, see this, this. Oh, yes, I want this. However, however, I have promised myself that I would finish off the works in progress that I had. One was the page that I have been filming in Johanna Basford's Enchanted Forest. I have now finished that. The other one I need to finish is the uh, Snow White page in Thomas Kincaid's Disney Dreams collection. And I promised myself I would not colour another single thing. I would not start another page until I had that finished. So... I've got so many books. You guys have sent me books as well, and I really like. I want to. I want to color in them, but I just have to discipline myself for a little while longer. But you can be assured that this book will be right up there as one of the things that I will be putting a pencil to as soon as I have finished that Thomas Kincaid picture. I love this as well. It's like a meteor shower, but it's underwater, or maybe it's watery things in the galaxy awesome like you can't make this up well obviously you can if your name's Kirby I love this as well with the skull and the little dudes in their in their viking longship it's just amazing absolutely amazing I'm not going to do a full flip through this because it's one of these ones that will have been done to death by the you know some of the channels that are dedicated just to adult coloring but uh, I just wanted to give you a quick a quick uh, flick through of that to let you see. So I'm super excited about this book and I will be colouring in it as soon as I can. All right, last but certainly not least is something that I have wanted for such a long time and I really just couldn't justify it because it was quite expensive. And that is the Derwent Inktense Paint Pan Travel Set and this is palette number two. I got the original one in a scroller box and that was probably about a year and a half ago and I have used this so much and it's funny because it's not something I thought I would ever use and uh, it, yes it has seen a lot of use and I love it. I love everything about it. I love the fact that you've got like a little colour swatch there that you can take with you. I love the sponge. I love the travel brush because you can fill up the water reservoir and you can pop a cap in it and you can fold it up and take it with you. The water flow in the brush is really good as well. The colours are amazing and they're they're just like the ink Inktense pencils but they're in block format so you can use them in a more painterly style. I freaking love this. I took this with me uh, when I travelled last time and it's something I love to take with me and I also used it for Inktober as well so yeah, you can tell I'm a fan. So this is a new set of colours, which I am super excited about. So I would really like to swatch these out real quick and just see them next to the other set and let you see the different colours that are in it. These are quite expensive. I think I paid £18 for this and that was it dropped in price and it's very dirty. I'm not very impressed with that. Okay, so the cases are, are exactly the same. Ooh, now this one doesn't have the swatch paper in it and it's got a different water brush in it. So, 
We don't know what colours are in it. I'm hoping it's going to tell you on the box. Uh, oh, these don't have colour names. Why are you doing this to me? These don't have colour names, which means I'm going to have to match them up with the pencils. Well, that makes me not happy. That uh, That's so disappointing. See, this one's got the, the colours and everything on. I'm going to have to do my own one of these now. Okay, but other than that, the palette is the same. This is what I was saying about the water brushes being different. This is the original water brush. So this one, it seems to have the same reservoir. That's exactly the same. But the cap has got a, a cap. The, the top half has got a cap on it. Again, that looks like the same brush, obviously. Mine's well used and it's not very pointy anymore. Let's show you that a bit closer. Oh, they're so nice when they're new. But this one has got a lid with it. And that's a really nice touch. I like that. I'm impressed with that. The Oh, this looks quite similar uh, to the poppy red. And other than that, everything looks kind of different. Okay, well that took a bit of work. I had to go onto the Derwent website there to find the the um the 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 the, the colours. I'm not gonna use the water brushes just because that means I'll have to get up again and go somewhere else. But I am going to go to a fresh page in my sketchbook. I'm also gonna look move the old set out of the way because I have already done stuff with them find myself a water brush so let's get these colors out i need to get a scrap of paper i am so disorganized i hate being this disorganized as well so this is sherbet lemon Ooh. okay the next one is tangerine Ooh. see how vibrant these colours are that's why I love these ink tents the next one is scarlet which I don't know if you get in a pencil I don't have it in a pencil form you might be able to get it in an ink tents block yeah that kind of looks like the poppy red from the other set it looks really dark in the palette but I know what's going to happen this is just going to go nuts and explode on the page yeah Oh, look at that. That's lovely. Now, the thing about these is they, they are ink based. So when they dry, they're very difficult to move about. It's not like watercolour where you can reactivate it. It's pretty much stuck to the page once it dries. So you have to work quite quickly with these. And it's exactly the same with the pencils. Uh, this is French Ultramarine. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. That's a really nice colour. I really like that one. Next, we've got... This should be navy. Yes, this looks more like navy to me. Oh, that's a lovely rich colour as well. I am quite a fan of kind of moody, grey-toned blues. I use them quite a lot when I'm painting, so that really appeals to me, that colour. I, I will make very good use of this colour. The next one is turquoise, which, again, I don't have in a pencil. I don't think I would have to look properly. Oh! That's pretty. That's real nice as well. I really like that one. And the next one is Ionian Green. And this is a, a an ink tense pencil that I use a lot. It's one of my favourites. So I know exactly how this is going to come out. Because I use it for trees, unsurprisingly. Are you, are you shocked, <laughs> dear viewers? No, you're probably not. Uh, next along the line, we have Light Olive. Again, a colour that I use fairly frequently just because of the... Well, number one, it's green, let's let's face it. Uh, but it's a much more earthy tone. It's a lot more sort of grey in it rather than more green. And that's particularly good for backgrounds and forests. That's what I like that one for. Or swamps, if, you like. if you're like that way inclined, you could use it for a swamp. Next, we've got red oxide. So I'm expecting this to be quite a sort of, um, like almost a rusty colour. Yeah. I enjoy them in pencil format and I didn't know, uh, see when I got the other set as part of the scroller box, I didn't know how much I was going to use it and I'm really surprised at how much I did use it and I'm really glad that um, I had subscribed to scroller box and I'm really glad when they brought this one out too. I was like, oh, the next one is sepia ink. So not quite brown, not quite black, somewhere in the middle. There you go. Really nice. Lovely. Nice for outlines as well. If you don't want a really harsh black outline, uh, that sepia colour is perfect. And the last one is antique white. I don't know how much of this is actually going to show up. Pop it down anyway. Yeah, I didn't think so. I was going to see if I've got some... I think I'm kind of pushing my luck here. I was going to see if I've got some black paper kicking about. I, I do have some. It's just finding it that's the problem. Oh, we're in luck. This was when I was testing the pastels out on. So that was, that was in the other cave. That was in the old cave. 
I still miss the old cave. I've not got used to this yet because it's just because I can't find anything though. Uh, let's see what it's like on black paper. So there you go, it is quite vibrant and you can probably build that up in layers. So yeah, that is it's quite a varied set of colours. It's quite a balanced palette. I really like that. That makes me happy. Yep, yeah, so I've found the demo page from... This is when I had my face accident. That was quite a funny... So that was two Augusts ago. So that was August 2018. And these are the colours from the original palette. And you can see where I've tried to layer them up to see what would happen as well. And uh, you can see that it's the same sort of idea. It's just different, different hues and shades. But you do get quite a balanced palette. And these will work well together as well. I was thinking like the Sherbet Lemon with the Kiwi, which is this colour here. Those two would, would blend quite well into each other. But as I say, if you're going to do that, you have to be quick. And we've got this lovely plum colour as well, which would probably go quite nicely to blend in with the fuchsia. So that gives us lots of scope and lots of options. And I am super excited about these and I am going to use them probably fairly frequently. And I've kind of got the an embarrassment of riches. The one thing I will say about these is these are not standard half pans. They're actually smaller. So you can't really take these out and transfer them into another palette. Because for me personally, I would quite like to be able to have them all together. Because I tend not to venture out and about an awful lot. I tend to art in the cave. So it would be nice for me to have them all in one set instead of two separate ones. But have the, the option to put them into a travel set and pick out the colours that I wanted if that was, you know, if I was going to go somewhere. Um, it looks like I'm just going to have to carry two palettes if I go anywhere. But that's no great disaster for me, as I say. I don't, don't do a lot of travelling, really. All right, guys, that is it for today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed coming along and seeing all the goodies that are in the new cave. Uh, the cave stash will be up and running again shortly. I just need a few more weeks to kind of like sort myself out and get back to normal because we do have a bit of money sitting there that we need to make a video with as well but that will come in due course I promise I just need a little bit longer to find my feet there is an awful lot going on in the house over the next three months because there's a lot of like major building work and stuff to be done and I'm gonna have to work around that because there's gonna be lots of banging and there's walls getting knocked down and doors getting put up and leaky roofs getting fixed so uh, yeah, we will get there and I, I've kind of got a backlog of, of videos that I want to make. So I will have to put them into some sort of sensible order, but we will get there. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to come and join me today. I've had really good fun with this, even though I can't find a freaking thing in this place. And I want to say thanks again to Pat, Taryn and also to Cal for being so generous and sending things to my PO box because you guys know you're going in the big book of gratitude. And we shall see you next time for another video here in the cave. Bye for now, everyone.